little over yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Perfect, thank you. All right, so today I'll be talking about the Socrata APIs and Socrata in general, and then where you can find data uh, today for your challenges. Who here has a challenge today that they know they're gonna tackle? Raise your hand. Only like a few of you. I know the rest of you have some challenge in your mind already. <laughs> All right, so who the heck are you, right? And why are you talking to me right now? Uh, so my name is Jaime Sanchez. I'm a solutions engineer at Socrata. You can find me in my Twitter there. Um, I work for this cool company called Socrata that we, uh, we basically build software to make data more useful to more people. Uh, and that's like what we do. How we do it is like we, we believe, or why we do it is like because making public data uh, more usable and having more access to public data just makes the world a better place, right? Makes governments more accountable. Governments, agencies like NASA more accountable too. And uh, we make it easy for, and in the end, we make it easy for governments to share their public data by using our platform where they, where they can upload CSVs, tables, SQLs, uh, databases into a very uh, intuitive, easy to use uh, portal where they can uh, API enable this data. So I'll, I'll go briefly through, through the APIs and how you use them, and then I'll like, tell you how you can find these data, data sets for your challenges. So uh, data.nasa.gov is your main like, stop uh, shop for anything data about NASA. So, and, and also all the challenges have links in them where you can find data sets. Uh, so once you go into data.nasa.gov, you'll see um, when you go into a data set, a specific data set, you can go into the API docs over here. And uh, that will like, lead you to a very like, tuto like a tutorial, a very like, intro introductory friendly uh, place where you can get to know the APIs. Uh, we also have another uh, functionality called Data Lens where you can explore data sets on the web. Uh, but also there's an endpoint there where you can get JSON and GeoJSON from data sets that are like uh, have geo or are geo coded. I mean, let's do an example. Uh, who here knows what EVAs are? Yep, so that's when some dude in space exits the the you know the, the shuttle or some person exits uh, any vehicle in space. So let's compare U.S. and Russian activities, right? Who wins? I think we all know who wins. Uh, so we can do simple filters like by country, right? So this is the endpoint, and you would just tag like the column name and then the value that you want. Uh, and we call them SQL queries because they're very like SQL esque. Mm -hmm. So. There's more information at dev.socrata.com about how to use them. You can aggregate data. Here we're doing a sum on the duration of seconds per country. Uh, and then let's see who wins, right? So I think you, you can see 37,000 for Russia and 81,000 for the USA. So the US has more EVA seconds out there, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you don't need to register. Uh, for using the API, it's open, so you can just query it as at your will. But if you don't want to get throttled after a while, you, you need to get a token. And then, so, you know, then you can make more API requests. All right, um, if you need help, you know, we're, we're here to help. I'm here, my friend Peter is over here. Peter, raise your hand. And Kathy over here is also here for, Kathy, there, there we is. So she can help you guys, uh, and me, of course. Um, the first, the first place to, to, I mean, get help about queries, about uh, filtering and stuff like that, that does require to come. And here's a sample app that I build, uh, which is basically every, it's using a meteorite data set, and it's every meteorite that's heavier than my dog, uh, <laughs> reported by NASA since the 1500s. You know, before actually NASA existed, there was meteorites, of course, but there's this data set that has, you know, the data spanning from before. Uh, so it kind of moves around the world, showing you where all the meteorites landed and the size, right? All right, let's get this party started, right? <laughs> let's, let's get hacking. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're in uh, any of the categories, like, you know, ideas and create, or one of, if you choose one of them, maybe we choose the, the landslide uh, data set, um, the challenge, sorry. Uh, you'll see the background, you'll see the NASA resources on the right. Uh, you can click on, on those resources, or you can also go to the, the data.nasa.gov portal, 
Uh, they just recently relaunched this one, a, a new redesign, which is really cool. And you'll have the data catalog, the dev portal, and other resources to, to help you uh, in your projects. Uh, let's say we search for landslide data, because that's a challenge, and click on one of these. You'll come to what we call like the landing page for the data set, and you'll have a description of that data set, when it was last updated, how many columns it has. Um, you can contact the data set owner if you have questions, and um, see like a preview of that table. And the next thing, like when you want to explore kind of like a data set on the web, you have uh, what we call data lens, uh, which is a way to kind of like query for cross-filtering the data set into like, let's say I only want to see the landslides reported on 2016. So now I see the map updated for that, right? And then uh, just one last thing, if you want to like actually get to the documentation for this data set, we auto-generate doc documentation for every data set. Uh, you can go in and, and try. And then if you want to use this data set somewhere else, you can exp open it with Plotly, with CardoDB, or even if you, you want to use your own thing like Pandas or JavaScript or whatever, we have code snippets that make it easy for you to introduce data, set, uh, data sets into your app. So we have all the code snippets in the bottom over here. And that's it. Uh, so thank you. Uh, come find me if you have any more questions. And uh, happy hacking. Thank you, Scrata. Next up, we have Twilio. Hello, everybody. Uh, can you all hear me? Yeah. All right, I want to talk loud. Hopefully, the live stream can hear too. Uh, my name is Greg. I uh, work for a company called Twilio. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many people here have heard of Twilio before? Oh, that's who has anyone used Twilio before? Oh, that's awesome. All right, cool. Uh, uh, for those of you who uh, haven't heard of Twilio or used it before, um, we have, you know what, actually, instead of telling you all about it, I think I'm just gonna show you here. Um, so the thing we're most known for are these programmable phone numbers. Um, and so I went ahead and uh, ahead of time, I bought this phone number uh, that is in Jacksonville. I think it's uh, sorta close to Cape Canaveral. I went there as a kid, but it's been a little while. Um, and so in a minute here, I'm gonna have y'all text this phone number. So if you could pull your phones out and open up your SMS app. Uh, and what I've done here is just point this number to a server that's running locally on my machine here. Uh, and so we're gonna write just a little bit of code to write some instructions of what to do when this text message comes in. Uh, now I'm going to use uh, uh, Python. Who here is gonna be using Python this weekend? All right, so quite a few, all right, great. Uh, so uh, whatever language you're using, you can use Twilio uh, in that language. Um, I do it a lot with Ruby, we have PHP helper libraries, we have uh, .NET, Java, JavaScript, um, whatever you're doing, but Python uh, seems to be quite popular uh, at these events and I've been really digging it lately. So uh, I'm going to create a new app. Uh, I'm using something called Flask. Uh, has anyone here used Flask before? All right, it's just a really lightweight way to build a web app. Uh, and I'm going to create a new route that's going to accept a post request on the uh, message endpoint, uh, well, like this. Uh, and the reason for that is that when y'all text that phone number in just a second, uh, Twilio is gonna make an HTTP request to the server here. And what we need to do is just give it back an HTTP response, and that response is gonna just be some XML, it's a simple set of uh, XML tags we call Twimmel, that just tells Twilio to uh, send you back a reply message. So say, hello from Space Apps, NYC. All right, and then we'll just close our tags. All right, and then I, once we have that, I'm gonna come over and I'm going to restart my server. And let's just check the code, we'll go through it one more time. So we're creating a new app, we're setting up a, a, a route that will handle a post request on the message endpoint. Uh, and that is going to just return an HTTP response that tells Twilio to send back a message to you, all right? Uh, and so why don't y'all go ahead and just text your favorite emoji to this number. It's 
2001. All right, your favorite emoji, 904-204-2001. Let me know if you get a response back. You get it? 904-204-2001. And throw your hand up if you get a response. We got it? All right, cool. So we're getting some response back. One more time for the folks who uh, didn't do it. 904-204-2001. All right, so that's how we use the, you can buy a phone number in about a minute and in just a few minutes you can write the code to respond. We can also use Twilio though to make phone calls. So I'm gonna use our helper library. And again, I'm just using the, the uh, uh, one for Python, but you can do the exact same thing uh, in whatever language you're, you like. And I'm also going to import the OS library so that I can pull in my uh, uh, environment variable so that I can create a client. Uh, once I have that client, I'm going to grab a list of all of the messages that have been sent to that phone number that we just bought. All right, so this is gonna be your text messages. Uh, and then I'm going to step through the messages uh, and with each message, I'm going to print the body of the message. So this is gonna be your favorite emoji. Uh, and then I'm also going to use that same client to create a new phone call. And that is going to be to the number that you sent your message from. So this is your phone number. Uh, it's going to be from my Twilio number. And then I'm also gonna pass it a URL. And that URL is going to uh, have instructions on what I want Twilio to do when you answer the phone. All right, and so those instructions are gonna look so similar that we can actually just copy and paste them. Uh, but instead of responding to a message, we are responding to a call. And instead of uh, having it send back a message, we're gonna do a couple different things here. So we are going to first play an MP3. And that MP3 will be very special for the occasion. Uh, We'll just drop in a URL of an MP3 there. Uh, and then we are also going to send you back a uh, link to this awesome blog post that another guy on my team uh, named Sam Magnu wrote about using the NASA APIs and Flask and Python to text Mars or to text a rover. I, you get pictures back uh, from the rover on Mars. Uh, it's an awesome blog post. If, you, if this stuff interests you, you should definitely check it out. It's super easy. It'll probably take you like 10 minutes to get through the thing. Um, all right. so. We are playing an MP3 and we are sending back a link. Uh, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back, restart my server one more time. Uh, we will come over here and we will run our script and we will see the favorite emojis that we have. And then your phone should start to ring. And when your phones ring, uh, go ahead and answer it, put it on speakerphone uh, and we will fill the room uh, with sounds of a, of a, of a song. So. And that was me testing before this thing. Hello, 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 hello. Is anyone phones ringing? All right, throw it on speakerphone. We got it? All right, crank it up all the way. All right, yeah, yeah, so it's a little fine. All right, cool. So, uh, so again, my name is Greg. Uh, super easy to get up and running. Uh, if you all have any questions, I'll be around uh, and uh, would love to chat about this stuff. Um, we also have a promo code. Come find me. I'll give you the promo code for 20 bucks and free credit. So thank you all very much. Have a good one. Great demo. Uh, please now silence cell phones uh, now to continue in here. Uh, next up, we have Clarify. Hey guys, my name is Kanal. I am a developer evangelist at a little company called Clarify. How many people here have heard of it? Awesome. So for those who haven't, Clarify is an artificial intelligence API. Um, pretty much we have neural networks in the cloud that let us tell you what um, the videos you send us or the images you send us, what we're seeing. Um, but it's a lot easier to show you a demo. Um, so I have a little demo loaded up on my phone. Um, to give you an idea of what artificial intelligence an API can do. So we have an app here, and we call it our Claire app, and pretty much it's telling you what it sees in the world. Um, 
and it's super easy to start using this by yourself. Um, so not only can we get photos or videos and tell you what we see, we can also train it as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and train it on the audience. And I'm going to point it right here, take a photo, and then I'm going to say um, uh, space apps. Done. So you see space apps now, now it doesn't. See space apps now, now it doesn't. So pretty much you can send us any video or photo, we'll tell you what we see, um, and then also you can uh, do custom training as well, which I just demoed. Um, and this is super simple to get started with. Um, you can just go to clarify.com, click on get your free API key. Automatically it'll tell, put you in our quick start guide. Um, from there you can easily copy and paste a couple of lines of code. Um, and then you can send us a photo, you can send it to us as a URL, or you can send it to us actually as the image loaded locally. Um, and then you can get started. Um, you can also, like I showed you in the app, how you can custom train your own AI. Uh, you can go ahead and use our preview uh, screen as well, where you can just log in and upload your own photos instead of using our uh, API just in case you want to. Um, so if you want, uh, for the best use of Clarify for this weekend, uh, we're offering something pretty sweet. We have these Galaxy skateboards. Um, so if you guys are interested in using Clarify, um, best use gets a uh, Clarify skateboard, but that's not all. Uh, <laughs> we're also giving GoPros uh, for every, the winners of the best use of the API. Um, so happy hacking, guys. Okay, so now 